Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and a Frexum Bank. Good day and a warm welcome to Africa Investor Today with me, Avon Middleton. We take a look at news on politics and economy. A coalition of candidates who lost to Gabonese President-elect Ali Ben Bongo in last month's election has lodged a complaint with the country's top court, the group which includes veteran opposition leader Pierre Mambundu and former Interior Minister Andre Mba Obame, both of whom scored just over 25%, accused Ben Bongo of rigging the poll to succeed his father as president. Violence broke out in several towns across Gabon when it was announced that Ben Bongo had won with 41.7% of the vote. In other news, foreign direct investment flows to Africa have plunged sharply in the first quarter of this year after reaching record levels of $88 billion last year. This is according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development's annual World Investment Report released at the end of last week. UNCTAD said the decline, which was expected to continue this year, had important consequences for development on the continent as foreign investment was a major contributor to gross fixed capital formation. The report showed foreign direct investment into South Africa last year was $9 billion, almost double 2007's 5.7, but it dropped 80% in the first quarter of this year to $1.2 billion, compared with 5.3 in the first quarter of last year. However, the figures are distorted by the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China's payments for a 20% stake in Standard Bank. On to a short break, we bring you more news shortly. Redefining energy means redefining life. At the Petroleum Oil and Gas Corporation of South Africa, our commitment to greater renovation and greener fuels has made us pioneers in the field of gas to liquids technology. It has also earned us worldwide recognition for producing the cleanest fuels through environmentally friendly processes. That's how we've become the international leader in diesel technology. Through pure innovation, pure energy, pure brilliance. In some companies and markets news now, Kingdom Meikles Africa Limited and three associates have been specified by the Zimbabwean government, an order which places them under state administration. Stemford Moyo, a lawyer for Meikles, said in an interview from Harare, the capital of the country today. He further stated that the order was illegal. And SAB Miller was upgraded to buy from Neutral on Friday at UBS, which said the turning point for the company's volume recovery is approaching. The investment bank said it expects emerging markets to recover faster than mature markets, putting SAB in the best position to benefit from this trend. It likes SAB Miller's Latin America and Africa exposure and will help lead to above-average long-term volume growth. And power generating company Kenjen says it has already surpassed the minimum subscription mark of 9 billion shillings for its infrastructure bond, indicating the energy firm could exceed its total target of 25 billion by close of the offer's application period. MD Erin Joroche said on Thursday that investors had already committed to well over 60% of the minimum subscription threshold of 9 billion in the bond issue, which closes on September the 29th. Kenjen, which supplies about 80% of Kenya's total electricity power demand, is hoping to raise at least 15 billion shillings through the debt instrument to finance new power generation projects. We'll be back with some banking and finance news in just a moment. Afrexum Bank is Africa's leading trade finance bank, an organization dedicated to promoting African trade through credit, risk-bearing and advisory services. We pride ourselves on having local presence throughout the continent and are committed to extending our award-winning trade and project finance programs to unlock private sector development continent-wide. We invite you to become a part of our vision for a strong Africa in a changing world. If you trade within Africa, contact us to support you. In banking and finance, mixed reactions yesterday trailed plans by the Central Bank of Nigeria to curtail sole proprietorship of banks in its ongoing reforms in the sector. Specifically, two shareholder groups that spoke with The Guardian argued that the CBN should restrict its functions to that of regulations rather than attempting to dictate to existing board members. The CBN governor had on Wednesday in Lagos said, 
we have not offered any of these banks to any investor and do not intend to force the banks on any investor. However, the Central Bank of Nigeria would not allow these banks to go back into the same one-man structure that they were in before now. We will look for and advise the banks to look for appropriate core investors, local or foreign, that will bring in the governance and status that would ensure we preserve the long-term value of shareholders by building an institution. And the International Finance Corporation is set to invest 150 million US dollars in South Africa's APSA Bank to provide funding for infrastructure projects in sub-Saharan Africa. The bank will receive 30 million US loan from the IFC plus 120 million standby credit facility. APSA will use the funds to finance infrastructure projects in the region. The IFC is providing similar financing to other financial institutions to help ensure privately funded infrastructure projects across Africa have access to funding to weather the, to weather the financial crisis. We'll bring you some infrastructure news next. We'll be back in a short moment. Africa Investor, the leading African investment magazine, is essential reading for investors in Africa filled with the very latest in pan-African investment and finance news. In addition, log on to africa-investor.com to find out more about our exciting capital market infrastructure and tourism events, and our long-standing investable Africa Investor 100 Index Series, which tracks over $600 billion of African equities. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor. And in some infrastructure news, technology company Altec and the undersea cable consortium Seacom have struck a deal to buy bandwidth capacity on each other's networks. Seacom switched on its high capacity cable to linking Africa to India and Europe in July and Altec will now buy a capacity of 5 gigabytes per second. Altec has an option to double that capacity over three years. The reciprocal part of the deal sees Seacom buy bandwidth on a terrestrial network owned by Altec's Kenyan subsidiary Kenya Data Networks. That terrestrial cable in East Africa will let Seacom deliver its international capacity to operators in landlocked countries. And Sierra Leone welcomed news of the discovery of oil off its coast with cautious optimism, saying the whole country should benefit. The first find of oil in the West African nation was announced earlier by a consortium led by U.S. firm Anadarko with Australia's Woodside Petroleum Limited, Spain's Repsol YPF and Britain's Tello Oil PLC as partners. Sierra Leone's Information Minister Ibrahim Cabo told journalists, President Ernest Korome is extremely happy about the discovery but has advised that we must all be cautious and watch for further developments. And with that optimistic news, we wrap up today's bulletin. Be sure to join us tomorrow for another update. Goodbye. Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and a Frexham Bank.